What is up, you guys? <laughs> it is your boy, Brenton Biggers here, and welcome to another video. And Thanksgiving games, <laughs> they were definitely something. So you could say this is my reaction of the NFL football games that happened in Thanksgiving. Um. So yeah, but anyway, guys, I hope you guys really did had a happy Thanksgiving. Um. It, you know, it's just, you know, a time where you can, like, chillax and hang out with your fam, and you know what I'm saying? Um, you know, and I, I, I had a good Thanksgiving for myself, you know? It was really nice. I got to eat some turkey, uh, watch the Packer game, which they ended up winning. Um, like, it was a very, it was a very good game, um, the Packer game. Honestly, the best out of all the games, honestly, but you get the point. This was a very good Thanksgiving. I was very thankful to have both Seahawks and Packers play on Thanksgiving, but I wasn't thankful for one of them being lose the one of them losing. You already know which one I will be. But I mean I would have been fine if it was close, but it really wasn't, so we'll get to that later. But anyway, um, before we get into the video, we are super close to getting 200 subscribers. So, if you guys have not subscribed yet, I would highly recommend it because I'm pretty sure I might want to make, I would love to make a 200 subscriber live stream tomorrow instead of delaying it all the way to Saturday. Nobody would want to see that, don't they? So... Yeah, or even Friday, even. Like, even if it was Friday, like, I bet you a lot of people are not going to be happy about that. So, yeah. I do highly recommend this is the perfect time to subscribe. Because if you don't, you're not going to get that five-hour live stream this weekend, obviously. And I would highly recommend it to be this weekend because this is the weekend to definitely do it. Just, just saying. But yeah, but anyway, let's actually get into the video for once. <laughs> but uh, let's start with the Packer-Lions game. This was a game I had low expectations for. Packers had so many injury players for the of the following. David Bakhtiari, Luke Musgrave, Elbon Wicks, Aaron Jones. And then on defense, Jerry Rear, Javondre Campbell... Darvon Savage, Eric Stokes, like, we had a lot of injuries heading into this game, which made it very concerning of if we are actually going to win this game. But, my oh my, this was a very surprise. The Packers end up beating the Detroit Lions. Now, honestly, apparently there's like a curse going on with the Lions that they don't win Thanksgiving games for some reason, but, yeah. But Jordan Love had, arguably, I think his, outside of the uh, Chargers game that he had, this is his next best game out of, I think, his entire career so far. He was amazing. He wasn't, like, there wasn't really, I think, any problem with him heading into that game. Like, he only had, like, yeah, sure, it sucks that he didn't get, like, more than 30 points that game, which I love that we could have gotten. But the thing that really makes me happy the most, for one week... Yes, one week, because technically this is the same week that we beat the Chargers. We put up a combined points of 52 points. Think about that for a moment. 52. I think if you combine all the games combined, I think if you times this, these two games by three, this, this game would have more points than all the other games in the past weeks. That's saying something. And that's what I'm very happy for. Like, obviously, I was a little disappointed with our defense, like, outside of the, like, the first half, obviously, because our first half defense was just freaking crazy. But the second half, it started to die down, but it was still doing good enough to win a game, and and our offense was just going on unbelievable. And also, what the heck happened with Christian Watson in this game? He had, I think, the most... Res no, I don't think he had the most receptions. But he may have the most receptions, the most yards, and had a touchdown in this game. Something that nobody was expecting from Christian Watson anymore. 
Pitt consistent, like, so this is my opinion on Christian Watson. Christian Watson is just not that guy anymore. It seems like he's starting to become a bust. Which sucks, because we traded two seconds again. So, aka, you could say pretty much a first-round pick for Christian Watson. But, man, he decided to prove that he's not a bust label yet. He had an amazing game, and I'm just very faithful, happy for him. You know, it's also another interesting player that actually had a good game, too. Jeff Health. Jeff Health had actually a very good game. And this is a guy heading into the game who I'm pretty sure never gotten a chance to get on the field as much as he did heading into this game. So the fact that he did and actually proved himself very decently, this actually makes this 2023 class already so much more better. Because we drafted Jalen Reed, who, by the way, has been an amazing weapon. He could be receiver. Honestly, I can think he could honestly be running back, in my opinion. So, yeah, the, the, like that's what you can do. And then you also have Ipon Wicks, who, yeah, who was hurt, but he ha he's actually having a good career as a WR4 or 5 option on what is a very young Packers team. And then, obviously, again, like I said, Jeff Health, and then on Defense, there hasn't really been anything from 2023, but Andrew Carlson has also been very nice in some capacity. But he, this is a team that is very young and starting to already figure out what they're doing. Now, obviously, I'm not even going to get my hopes up for 2024 because I'm honestly just going to say this straightforward. With the amount of teams that have been surprising in 2022 and now they are just starting to suck is endless. So I'm not even going to try to get my hopes up because there are just so many teams that just for some reason are sucking, which I guess you will actually find out what one of those teams are. But yeah, it, it, it is it is very happy to be a Packers fan right now because we are basically one game away from making it into the postseason. I know that's weird to say, but it's actually true. And this is our schedule for the rest of the season. We have cheese, which is going to be very tough, but with beating the Lions, which, yeah, the Lions are frauds, let's face it, but we're going against the Chiefs that have just not looked good at all if it weren't for Travis Kelsey being on the field, and it, like, so we, there's a chance for us to actually beat the Chiefs, and I wasn't even expecting that heading into this game. I'm like, okay, well, our chances of beating the Chiefs are very slim. Like, I'd say a big, fat, like, 5% maybe. But after this game, I think it went from 5% to, like, 20 or 22%. That is very high. Like, that basically went up, like, 15, 17%. That's a lot. So, and also with the Chiefs, just for some reason, can't receive, have any receivers... This could be a very interesting game where we could probably win just because if they can't learn how to catch a ball, we kind of did against the Chargers, but you get the point. And then you had the Commanders-Cowboys game. Now, obviously, I don't really watch any games outside of, like, the Packers or the Seahawks, so I didn't watch this game. But all I know is that the Cowboys just absolutely damaged what was a, a very good offense by commanders with Sam Howell, who has the most passing yards. And then you have a defense that's kind of just not that good. This was a terrible game for the commanders, and to just honestly be bad for commanders fans. And this is just proof that I honestly am starting to, like, it's just, just, it's just like leaning more closer to hopefully getting Robin Rivera fired, which I hope he does get fired by this week. So, yeah. Um, but then the Cowboys had another amazing game. Duran Bland, actually, has now had two pick sixes in a row. Yeah, for the past two games, he's gotten two pick six, which I think is very unbelievable. But, yeah, and that's just, like, proof. Like, this secondary is actually pretty scary. And it's just without Trayvon Diggs. He's out for the rest of the year. So the fact that they're playing this good despite Trayvon Diggs is out is unbelievable to me. And then you have the Seahawks and 49ers game. I thought heading into this game, there is like a 30, 35% chance we could have win. But honestly, 
I obviously picked the Niners because it's like, we just can't play good against our division rivals for some stupid reason. And that streak continued. We got decimated by the Niners. Now, I'm going to admit, the defense did not play as poorly as a lot of people think. Again, this is one of the best offenses, was basically the best quarterback, the best running back, one of the best receiving cores in the league, one of the best tight ends, and then having Trent Williams, who basically makes this whole line great to terrible. So, that's something I have to say. So, our offense is going against a top five, our defense is going against a top five offense. And we actually picked six of them. That was our only touchdown that game. Our offense, on the other hand, was very disappointing. I mean, outside of that one-handed catch and also the fact that we got, like, six points, this was a very disappointing and honestly very interrogating game from the offense perspective. Geno Smith, he did not look that good, I heard. Zach Charbonnet cannot be the WR1. It, or, I mean, not WR1. RB1 if he continues to have games like this. And I'm very disappointed from our O line and our receiving core. Our receiving core barely got any catches, and our O line was basically the main reason for it. So that's basically the game. The game basically is saying to me that the Seahawks are terrible. That's what I heard. From, that's pretty much what I'm saying in this game. People are going to get fired, hopefully. And people need to, like, we're going to need to start reevaluating this team. Because that first round pick that we have is probably going to be heading in as, like, the 20th overall pick, which we did last year. So if that pick, that that, that pick is going to be very crucial to seeing how this team is going to be. Are we going to get a quarterback in a deep, heavy class of quarterbacks? Because Geno Smith is getting up there in age. Are we going to get a wide receiver? Actually, no, no. Are we going to go get an alignment? Because our O line has a ton of young talent. But hey, I guess we could add on to another one. Hopefully, we'll sign one. Are we going to release players? Like, for example, Devontae Can- Deontay Jones' contract is so unbelievably ridiculous right now. It is actually getting very unbelievable. And same thing with Geno Smith. Geno Smith's contract is terrible, too. Are we going to draft a nose tackle? Because it's just starting to seem that our run game is just not doing anything. And especially if we're going against the Niners twice a year, which they run with both Debo Samuel and Christian McCaffrey, we need to fix that run game. Because that's like basically the biggest threat of this entire conference is the 49ers. I just got to point that out there. And then you have also linebackers. Now, right now, it's good, obviously. We have Devin Bush. I also heard that we might be signing Shaq Leonard. And then we also had Jordan Brooks and Bobby Wagner. But Bobby Wagner is about to be gone. Devin Bush is on a one-year deal contract. And Shaq Leonard might not be going to sign with us. So you have all those three players being gone in an instant. So we kind of do need to draft a linebacker. Because you could see that Jordan Brooks cannot be the only good linebacker. Otherwise, he just sucks without him. Without Bobby Wagner or anybody else there to help him. This is just so a disappointing year, I think, so far. Because this is a team that heading in, I thought, could have made it to the Super Bowl. If they just... If Geno Smith could just repeat what he did last year, which he has not been doing so far. Our running backs could just be good, but Ked Flocker's not hurt. I thought this was going to be the best receiving core in the league. One of the best ones. And guess what's going on right now? It's not really one of the best. And then you said no event, which has barely done anything. Our roll line has actually not been doing that good. And our defensive line, I'm not so surprised, has yet to do anything. Because we keep drafting players and not signing players that are actually good or trading them. Like, one of the biggest disappointments I think out of that entire draft it's the fact that we could have actually, like... So, this is the one disappointing factor that I have. We could have trade up with the Cardinals to get Will Anderson Jr. We could have, I don't know, in the d- mid-season deadline, could have potentially tried to trade Deano and Hunter for, like, a first-round pick. I would have been fine with that. But no, instead we had to trade for a Leonard Williams, who did look good in this game that I watched it. But, 
main act already seems like to Ben is such a terrible idea. Because that first round pick is the only pick we have in like the first 64 picks. That's a yikes. Especially. Especially. With this team looking as bad as it's been. And also our cap situation. Because Geno Smith, he's holding up like $35 million a year, which is a lot. For a quarterback that's not been proving himself that much lately. So that's why I was very disappointed with the fact that we signed him for a three-year deal and also the fact that we signed him for $35 million. Because like I would have been fine if it was $30, $25 million, but no, it's $35 million. That's pretty freaking terrible, especially in proving it now. And the one problem I have with this team right now is this team could be heading into a rebuild again. Because Gino Smith is not doing that good. It doesn't even seem like this team is going to be anywhere close to a Super Bowl contender. And then you also have players like Tyler Lockett, Bobby Wagner, Ramondre Jones. Well, yeah, I guess Ramondre Jones. Jamal Adams, all getting up there in age. So we have all of these old aging players. And a team that was expected heading into the season to maybe contend for the Niners or the Eagles or the Cowboys from getting into the Super Bowl. Now, we basically are kind of like the new Lions. I was saying so much crap about the Lions, it's actually starting to piss me off the amount of... I actually am thinking that the Seahawks are actually just frauds. Because they proved it pretty clearly heading into this game and also in the game that this is just a team that is not that good that needs to start figuring out what the hell they're doing if they want to make it to a Super Bowl or in the playoffs here. Because the rest of the schedule for the Seahawks are not that easy at all. We have the Cowboys on Thursday next week. Then we have the Eagles, which yeah, we usually beat for some reason. But we're going against the Eagles. And this is the best team in the NFC. It basically actually one of the best teams in the league right now. And then we have the Niners again. And then we also have the Cardinals. And I'm pretty sure there's like some other bad team somewhere. And then that's it. That's our schedule heading into the season. Well, for the rest of the season. That is very terrible. And this is a bad thing. Because if we can't win one of these two games, or actually one of these three games in the Cowboys, the Eagles, or the Niners... Our playoff hopes are basically just non-existent. Because the Packers, like I said, have been very, playing very better, good. Vikings offense is about to get even better with Justin Jefferson coming back. The Cowboys are basically just locking the fifth seed. Like, I could go on and on about how this team can honestly basically just not make it to the postseason this year. Which, that would be a big disappointment from me and a lot of Seahawks fans. Because, like I said... Heading into the season, I was expecting this team to make it like 12 and 5, 11 and 6, or something like that, and maybe winning the division. Maybe. But no. That is not our team. Basically, our hopes to get into like an 11 and 6 now is basically thrown out of the window. Because we have to win against, like I said, opponents like the Cowboys, the Eagles, the Niners, and also the Cardinals at Arizona which they have actually been looking pretty good as well. So the fact they're going to get so many good teams right now is a big problem because this is just not a team that can beat good teams right now. We're basically like the Detroit Lions 2.0 in the NFC. Which, yeah, I, I said this a lot. Lions, I crapped on them so much that they are frauds and I was hoping that the Packers were going to beat them just to prove to them that they are just not that good of a team. And guess what? they end up winning. So now we actually are basically just pretty much as bad as, well, we're basically as good as the Packers, which they barely beat the Lions, and they also got, well, did they ever got destroyed? No, not really. They've been actually close to every game, funny enough. But yeah, the Seahawks, we need to, we need to figure out what the hell we're doing. Because this is very annoying. And if we don't make it to the playoffs, I want our offensive coordinator to be fired. I want our defensive coordinator to be fired. I want both coordinators gone. And I also just want to hopefully get some new coordinators who know what they're doing. And 
actually make this team good. And also sign defensive linemen, preferably D tackle, because our D tackle position is terrible right now. Or no tackle, you could say. And O linemen. Like, this was the biggest problem I think I have with this team heading into the season was the lack of actual good players at both positions. And it's been proved on numerous times that this is just a team that needs to rebuild their O-line and their defensive line. They started off very nicely with drafting Abraham Leokas, Charles Cross, and also having Damian Lewis there. But basically that's about it. This O-line needs to get better at guard and center because this O-line is terrible. Then the defensive line. I like a Genoa Wosu. Darrell Taylor is literally just a pass rusher, and that's it. And then also Derek Young, we have no idea. Derek Hall, I have absolutely no idea what we're going to do with him because it just seems like he's going to be terrible. Bafe Mafe has been looking very good. So it basically, our edge rushers are good right now. It is just our D tackles. The only player that's really deserving to be there is Devondre Jones, and that's it. Everybody else is basically a bridge player to an actual player. And this was a problem, because heading into the draft of the 2020 draft, the 2023 draft, we had Brian Breesey and Jalen Carter both on the same with the fifth pick, and we could have gotten Brian Breesey with the 20th pick. You know what we did instead? Desert Witherspoon and Jack Smith and Jigba. I am not saying that both of these picks are terrible. They've been playing very nicely. It's just I would much rather have Jalen Carter or Brian Breesey. Because both of those players would have made a big impact to the D tackle position, which is something that we desperately needed heading into the draft. Instead, what would it do? Nothing. And you know what's funny? Instead of trading that third round pick for a third round pick next year, which was something that we absolutely did not need it, we could have drafted Shilo Alila, I don't think that's his name, whoever got drafted by the Browns in the late fourth round or early fourth round, because he was expected before the 2023 draft. Well, not really, but like, you know, after the 2022 draft, he was expected to make it into the first round. So that would have been worth a gamble pick there. But no, instead we end up drafting nobody with that pick. And what are also some more disappointing picks? Drafting Zach Charbonnet, who has not been proving himself at all, but he's worth that pick so far. And... And then Derek Hall as well. Just Derek Hall has barely been on the field, and it's been very disappointing so far for him. And again, same thing with Zach Charbonnet. Like, our first draft picks, which are rarely usually this good, like, they've been both very good. It's just our second round picks have been terrible, and there has been nobody stepping up with our later round picks. And I guess Jake Bobo was also a good undrafted player, but that's basically it. So that's a big problem with this team. We did not have a good 2023 draft because we weren't including our first round. It's basically like a Giants draft if what we were thinking it was going to be in the 2022 draft, but that's it. So that is one big crucial detail. This team, we can, I can safely say now, this is not a good team. This team has to start figuring out their ways to actually become a good team. And they need to sign some alignment and D tackles heading into the season. Because if we don't and we don't re sign any of our linebackers, this is gonna be a long and painful offseason. But anyway, hope you guys hope you guys enjoy this video. Peace.